So in this video, we're going to talk about nucleic acids as a type of biomolecule, our final molecule in this sort of series of videos of what kinds of molecules do we find within all living cells. Uh, we've reviewed um, in each video kind of what I want you to know, so you're probably pretty familiar with that. So let's just jump right into nucleic acids. Um, nucleic acids have the atoms carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus in them. We've seen carbon and hydrogen and oxygen all before and really all, all of the biomolecules we've studied so far. Um, as before, please do not memorize this. This is way too complicated for us. Um, we're seeing nitrogen um, just like we did in proteins. So remember that the two uh, biomolecules that have the letter N in them have nitrogen as a constituent atom. And then phosphorus. Phosphorus. So phosphorus is going to be unique to nucleic acids, um, unlike uh, proteins, they do not have that. Um, but again, this uh, kind of picture of all of the um, atomic elements is really too much um, uh, because nucleic acids quickly get very complicated. So really, we're going to see in just a minute, we're going to see a much simpler model of nucleic acids that basically breaks up this kind of guy into three constituent parts. Um, we're going to see that, that we're going to represent a phosphate group. This is a sugar. Maybe you remember me saying that sugars could be pentagons or hexagons. And this is actually going to be the nitrogen base, um, which is going to be very important to how nucleic acids function. So let's go ahead and see that in the next video. Um, so again, kind of a simpler model here where we're not really looking at all the atoms anymore. Here's our phosphate group, here's our sugar, and then here is um, uh, nitrogen bases. And you can see that there are different types of nitrogen bases symbolized with different letters. As it turns out, nucleic acids have four different nitrogen bases um, kind of in each little slot um, that are just different chemicals. Um, and the nitrogen bases are really the key parts. This is really the code part of a nucleic acid like DNA that's shown here. As it turns out, it's the sequence of these nitrogen bases that really determines its function. Um, it's going to serve as a code, really an instruction manual for building proteins, which I'll get to in just a second. Uh, the phosphate and the sugar parts, as it kind of says up here in this picture, really just serve as a backbone. It's just kind of holding the rest of it together. So they serve an important function. Um, they're just going to make sure it's a really continuous strand on each side. Um, but again, really the functional part for the cell is going to be the nitrogen bases in the middle. Okay, um, so we've seen kind of um, all the constituent parts. Let's just kind of think about the overall, um, all three of them considered together. As this part of the uh, picture shows down here, we can see that if we consider a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base all together, we have what's called a nucleotide. And so that's what's considered the monomer or the building block of nucleic acids. That's the part that's repeating over and over again. Hopefully you can kind of see here that really all we have here are just sort of nucleotides combined together one after the other in order to make this big nucleic acid. Um, in our cells, um, we might have something like you know billions of nucleotides combined together just to make our master DNA code. So these guys are repeating a lot. All right. Um, the only thing this model doesn't show is uh, maybe you're familiar that the, the two strands actually kind of um, twist around each other in a, in a double helix classic shape. Um, so maybe seeing it three-dimensionally will kind of um, ring some bells with you as well. Okay, so let's just kind of briefly talk about the functions of these molecules. These molecules are so important to cellular function that we have an entire unit about DNA and RNA um, coming up later. So I really just want to give a, an overview of their function, and we're going to come back to really see much more specifically how they serve these broad functions later on. DNA is really the master code for how to build all of your proteins. I want you to imagine that you have billions of nucleotides connected together um, and in little sections you have very particular sets of codes that will teach your cell how to build all of the protein workers that your cell needs. Um, so how to um, build them, what amino acids they need to put together to build each protein. It's like a giant book a book full of these nitrogen-based codes, as we talked about just a minute ago. So that's DNA. 
Um, as it turns out, there's another type of nucleic acid called RNA. We're going to talk about the differences between them a little bit later. Uh, let me go ahead and point out that both DNA and RNA have the letters N and A in them, and those N and A stand for nucleic acid. The D and the R stand for what sugar, um, the, the sugar that makes them up is a little bit different. So I'm not too worried about that for right now. What do RNAs do? RNAs kind of are also involved in the process of helping to build the protein workers. Um, there are actually many different types of RNAs. Uh, one of them is literally just a copy of the DNA code. That's this guy right here in this picture. There are gonna be some other RNA workers who actually bring the amino acids and there's gonna be a big giant green um, RNA worker who's gonna actually put the amino acids together. Um, we're, we're gonna get all into that in a different unit. So for our purposes right now, DNA is the master code and RNAs are kind of just like helpers helping to build the protein workers. And then one other guy I wanna introduce, and I'll just talk about briefly in this video because we have a whole video for just ATP as well. Um, if you don't mind, I'm not even gonna tell you what the, what the acronym stands for. I'll just wait for that in the, in the next video. Um, but ATP is a really important molecule in cells as well because uh, that molecule actually delivers energy to the protein workers. Um, in some cases, protein workers need a little bit of energy to be able to execute their jobs. Um, when you contract your muscles, you're spending a lot of ATP, your proteins are doing all of that muscle contraction, for example. So here is the atomic structure of ATP. Um, we can see, uh, maybe if you recall, kind of uh, me doing the subregions before, these are the phosphates. As it turns out, ATP has three phosphates. Um, just briefly, it's called uh, triphosphate. That's why it's called TP. Um, this is the adenosine part that makes it A, but basically it's sh a sugar. And here is the, um, the nitrogen base, just like all other nucleic acids. Um, so, um, uh, we don't need to know this atomic structure either, just like you've seen before. We're going to greatly simplify by just thinking about it as here's the nitrogen base A, here's its sugar, and really this is the functional part of the molecules we'll see in that video because when a um, ATP helps energize a protein, it actually pops one of the phosphates off and gives it to the protein and that effectively energizes it so it can go execute its job. All right, um, so just in summary, we, we talked about the atomic constituents of nucleic acids. We quickly went away from the atomic model because we see that there are kind of bigger units we can think about. The nucleotide that has a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogen base that make it up. And we saw some very basic uh, functions of nucleic acids, for the most part, coding for all the protein workers that need to be built. And then we also see, saw that ATP is a crucial um, deliverer of energy to proteins so that proteins can do their jobs. And just kind of in broader summary, I did this in one of my earlier videos, but I just wanted to see, uh, now that we've seen all of these biomolecules and all of the atoms that make them up, I just wanted to summarize one more time, how is it that living organisms get access to all those atoms so that they can build all of the constituents of their cells? Well, remember that for heterotrophs like us, humans, that's a pretty easy story. We simply get um, our atoms the same way we get our energy, we just eat food. We eat other organisms and we take apart their um, already constructed molecules within their cells and we just repurpose them for our own. So when you eat a hamburger, you're actually um, taking a lot of that protein and cutting it back up into a constituent amino acids um, and nucleic acids are cut up into nucleotides and you can just send them to your own cells to build human proteins and human nucleic acids. So we just get it by eating. Um, I have a lot more respect for the autotrophs because they have a lot more work to do. They, they don't eat for the most part. Um, and so they've got to build all of their biomolecules. Um, they're going to start by building their carbohydrates out of carbon dioxide they take in and water they take in from the roots. As it turns out, the carbon and the oxygen, remember that carbs have C, H, and O in them. So the carbon and the oxygen come from the carbon dioxide they fix, and the H comes from the water that they split apart. So they kind of start by building their carbohydrates. Maybe you remember that lipids also contain C, H, and O, so they can kind of have proteins that can convert some of their, their carbohydrates into lipids. Um, but remember that proteins and nucleic acids have additional atoms like nitrogen for both and then sulfur and phosphorus for one or the other. Well, they're looking to find that in the soil too. 
Remember that water dissolves things well, so that hopefully when they're pulling in water from the soil, they're also pulling in nutrients like nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. And then they have proteins that can take some carbohydrates and convert them into amino acids that maybe have CHONS, or other carbohydrates can be converted into nucleotides that have CHONP. So they're really kind of building themselves from, from scratch, essentially, taking very simple chemicals and, and constructing all of the biomolecules that they need to build their bodies out of.